Hi, I'm Jinx. Cece. Lonnie. Jake. And I'm Andy, and we are Black Veil Brides. The night is the first uh, duology, is what we're calling them, uh, and the plan is to start releasing duologies like this with two song. Essentially, we're looking at them as records. Artwork, tours, everything that kind of encompasses a, a record cycle, um, but with two songs. And the idea there is to be able to to kind of capture moments for the band. We want to be able to, to have uh, musical kind of signatures to each thing. So with the feeling of kind of nostalgia on this one, going back in the time that we're doing the re-record, the idea was to have two songs that felt very much like the band that we've kind of maybe were in the past and maybe strayed away from a bit and kind of returning to that form. Um, moving forward, we want to keep doing that, where we have different records and elements and stuff, and there's a whole plan that I won't give away yet, but there's a whole plan for the next, uh, over, you know, next year and a half of, of consistently releasing this type of material, and um, so this first one is called The Night, and I won't tell you what the second one is called. <laughs> Saints of the Blood, uh, that song, that's a riff I've had for, I uh, mean, as long as I can remember. The demo I originally had of it, we stripped parts out of it, like the original solo in that went on a, I think it was a Devil in the Mirror, it was like the solo for that song, and you know, a lot of old demos, I would strip pieces out and use them for different songs. So we still had awesome riffs in that. In that particular instance, I did have this uh, just random, like, whatever it was, and this arpeggiating solo that was just crazy and uh, with a cool classical, um, uh, you know, uh, chord progression with it. And uh, yeah, Jake's like, oh, remember that crazy thing you had from years ago? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, that might work here. So we, we popped it in. When I got in the studio, I was I felt like I was going to have a heart attack after like <laughs> the first couple passes. You guys are there, you're like, oh my god, yeah. what are you That's doing? That's when we should have had the uh, the mic on you. We always talked for years about having the mic on you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. hear all the noises. Yeah, and so yeah. I, it's fun, you know, and, and you have that foundation and then just, you know, kind of modifying it a little bit. There was a bunch of different iterations of the song, and there was even uh, vocals done to different iterations. There was one on uh, Russian Divine uh, that was never really went anywhere. But that, I mean, there was versions of it. It was just a song that always felt like we could do better on it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think we did. When we got in the studio and we started working on what became the Vengeance and Saints of the Blood, there was so much excitement about making these songs and getting them out there that it became very clear that. So yeah, the idea of throwing convention into the wind and releasing things as these duologies and doing albums that way allowed us the opportunity to stay consistent with our writing, to tour uh, in ways that we can really see the most people for the most amount of time and then be able to create new content and give it to them again. And it just made it more interesting. I mean, quite honestly, when you've been a band as long as we have and put out you know five full-length records, EPs, everything else, you want to do new stuff. And I think that this is a model that we're really excited about. I think that moving forward, it's a sustainable model, something that we can do that allows for us to get together and to write songs together and release music and do music videos and artwork and all this stuff that we love doing and then bring it to people and say, this is the new thing. And then half a year later, there's another new thing and there's new songs and a new tour and everything. So it's an opportunity for us to, to create on a more uh, prolific level and to give people more. Also having fun again, you know, and like, coming up with uh, those old riffs that were made way back when, you know, Jinx and marrying these two parts that were written way back when, I mean, there's almost a nostalgia factor, especially when yeah, we're... Yeah, we were working for about an hour a day out of the five hours we were sitting together because we were fucking laughing. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Was a great time. Joe, I think we stuff. all, you know, uh, at one point each would say, like, man, this just reminds me of, like, ten years ago, how yeah, it felt. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every great record has, like, a story, and what's the story of this? And somebody was kind of uh, hinting at the idea that our first record didn't have any story because you know we didn't at the time there was no uh, understanding of what was going on you didn't realize that how what your life would do or change in the moment but now looking back on it the story of that record was a bunch of people that didn't have a pot to piss in that wanted to make an album together and we did it and it succeeded at a level that allowed us the opportunity to work with a bunch of producers and engineers and all these people but that kind of feeling of, of camaraderie and the, and the idea that we are doing this together and if we don't do it it's not going to get done on every level consistently for the last decade, um, we have been supported beyond, I think, our wildest dreams. There was never a fan-voted award that our audience didn't make nope. sure we won, yeah, you know what nope. I mean? There was, there was never a time where we've released anything that people didn't respond to it in a way that validated our hard work and made us feel like we were significant in what we were doing. And for all of us, you know, we have made no bones about the fact that we were losers or loners growing up and we didn't have a big 
friend group and weren't particularly popular and so to be able to spend our whole adult lives essentially being you know around all these other people that that see us in this way it's, it's been fantastic well i love you know relating to the fans and seeing them out there and you know signing autographs after shows and stuff wearing like that the makeup. wearing yeah. the makeup yeah even this week uh we had a bunch of tattoos like fans are still getting tattoos i mean that's like forever on your skin, and so it just shows their level of dedication to. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I didn't even know about that, by the way. Yeah, yeah I, didn't I didn't either. Yeah, I like, it's on his, it. Oh, it's yeah. on his arm. Here, show it. It's, you gotta, you gotta pull your. You yeah. can see part of it there. Yeah. yeah there it is. Of your oh, life. Yeah. It's yeah. who will tell the story of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, it's cool. I mean, that yeah. that just goes to show. I mean, the level of dedication and stuff. And now you're one of us, boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've all got black belt tattoos. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. a lot of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and, you know, from a musician standpoint, it's just so easy to be a fan of you guys because, like, you're such a oh. great drummer. Oh, you, you guys write killer riffs, and I love the Thank guitar you. harmonies Thank and stuff yeah, like that. Awesome. So it's uh, it's been a pleasure playing with you guys. You know, he's he's fit in right away. Um, yeah. One of those things that, and, and what I've told him and, and what we've talked about a million times is that there was such an importance when looking at what we would do moving forward with the band to have someone that was... Uh, a fan of what we do in the sense that they would be respectful of the connection that we have with the audience. This isn't like many bands in the sense that we have a following that is extremely dedicated to what we do on every level and you have to have a certain level of respect for that and it can't just be wow this is a band that has a fan base and this is really exciting uh, it needs to be something that's more intrinsic and so Lonnie being somebody that uh, I didn't know when I met him was a, a diehard fan of Black Veil uh, to then you know, I spent some time with him touring in a separate project and just got to know him and, the, and he was just the nicest person and so professional and then to find out that he was such a dedicated fan to the point where he's been to Blackville shows and every time around he showed me a picture the other day where years ago his phone case was the Set the World on Fire album cover <laughs> to be able to have someone join the band that is someone who came from that fan base and is now on stage with us they will respect, he will respect being on the stage and being in front of those people and won't treat it like a vehicle to get famous but rather a vehicle that is going to be like an emotional thing. Like, I'm pretty sure he'll probably cry at the Vancouver show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, all know. that stuff's true. And to be sitting here with you guys right now is it's pretty surreal. Yeah. And it's, it's funny how the universe Glad works. Glad to have you, buddy. Yeah, he's just a nice person. So I think that at the end of the day, uh, I, I hope that the fans can, you know, it's obviously, it's, it's hard any time there's a change in a band, but the hope is that people can see what a, a wonderful person he is and how much fun we've all been having. I mean, we, we tease him relentlessly, and that's just so much fun. <laughs> I grew up in Ohio. Um, I didn't know that AP was being made and printed and shipped five hours north of where I grew up. Uh, I remember I got it every single week at the grocery store and I was obsessed with every image and I cut out all the pictures of the bands that I liked and I put them up on the ceiling in my room and the whole ceiling in my room was a collage of all these bands and I remember one day I turned it over and it said like something like printed in Cleveland, Ohio and I was like holy shit <laughs> we gotta go <laughs> uh, and and I was just like obsessed with it and, and to me it all kind of went hand in hand with Warped Tour and that whole thing and seeing the bands that I love whether it was AFI or Alkaline Trio or Tiger Army or all these bands that were in AP at the time, especially a lot, Necromantics, bands that I really enjoyed when I was that age, especially seeing them in that magazine and thinking like, oh man, I want to be in that magazine. Um, to me, many kids that I know that are musicians dreamt of winning a Grammy or, you know, selling out Madison Square Garden, I think that the peak of my interest when I was like 14 was, I'm going to want to be on the cover of AP. And so to be able to achieve, to, to be able to achieve that dream so early in life, and to be able to have the consistent support of the magazine and everybody at AP, you know, whether it's being on the magazine, whether the band is involved in different stuff, hosting the award show, all that kind of stuff, um, you know, through AP, I got to perform with the Misfits at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? Like that's something that, for me as a little kid, that that was my favorite band. Like there's no way that I could have ever even dreamt of that. So um, the magazine and our relationship with the magazine has afforded me a lot of opportunities and. Um, like many of the things in our career, it, it is just like, holy shit, like, I just wanted to do this, and now this, doing this has afforded me all these other chances and opportunities. There was one time in particular we, you know, were playing, sharing the same stage with Metallica, and they were like my most favorite band growing up, and, you know, I always I had dreams about, you know, being in the Snake Pit, you know, the Black Album Tour and everything, and just being on that stage, and they brought the Snake Pit back and everything, and it was just, that, you know, he said surreal earlier, Lonnie, it's like surreal. We were on a headline tour and it was our first time in Russia and we're in Moscow and we're playing this arena with like 8,000 people there and I just like, I, I don't know, in the middle of the set I kind of lost myself and I was like looking at the crowd and like headbanging and I just thought, 
this is totally insane. I, I'm I'm in Russia right now <laughs> playing guitar on stage in front of a ridiculous amount of people. Like, how is this my life? And I remember going to uh, like I think it was like my first heavy metal show and seeing like them come off the bus, but they were like way back behind the gate. Mm -hmm. And like in my head, like, oh, what are they gonna do on the bus? What are they doing? <laughs> how, do they, how do they prepare for the show? Like, what do they eat? Like, it's all these stupid things that I would wonder, but that was like paired So with every day when I wake up, CC asks me all those questions. Yeah, yeah, I have a checklist, you know, it's like, it's a clip. What did you eat today? No, but it was like living that lifestyle that I always wanted to, you know? Like I always tell the story about when I was in my parents' home growing up, I used to imagine that the sound of the heater or the air conditioner when I was going to bed was the sound of a tour bus engine. So I'd be like all snuggling up, like, oh, I'm gonna wake up in wherever, like Des Moines or something. <laughs> I don't know if I knew that, that's awesome. Our goal was to be as tenacious as possible and to, for us to say thank you to the fans for giving us this amount of time by proving that we're worth it, you know, by going out there and doing the best live show we can, sounding the best we've ever sounded, looking as good as we can, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's important that we present that because if someone lets you stick around making music for a decade and still gives you the opportunity to do that as a job, that's a really cool thing that they've done for us, so it's, it's worth repaying them by really caring and trying, you know.